Mara and welcome back to Culinary Roleplay into the Heroes of the White Tower. In this series, we are going to take a deep dive and make this tutorial playthrough of this little fantasy open world solo friendly system that I have been creating for you guys and for myself as well. Heroes of the White Tower is basically this solo first fantasy adventure tabletop RPG and its main premise is basically open world adventuring. And what I mean by this is that the whole idea of the game is basically that you can discover and generate basically a whole open world. And while it's not completely unheard of, and there are many systems that do that already, what I'm aiming to do in my system is to make it as playable and as smooth as possible so you don't have to first like a roll like a really like a bunch of tables before you can actually get into the adventure but I wanted to create ways and mechanics that you can basically create everything that you need as you go or you can create everything in advance if you want to but in but this system really shines on when you just like create just enough stuff material like you like you just create that bridge as you go and build maybe like three steps a steps ahead instead of like building five or ten steps ahead and then you take the ten steps and then you build ten again and what was also a really important aspect while creating this game was that i wanted to create a kind of like heroic fantasy system that you could either play as a solo like a solo character or as a party and the balance would balance i hate to say balance but like the game would, would not break completely or feel like unbearable to play and the other aspect is that while i enjoyed a lot of narrative systems i still enjoyed some gaming mechanic aspects of different adventure games like legend of zelda or jack and daxter and many other open-ended adventure games where basically the idea of that when your character like adventures forward you pick up new skills you pick up new items and those are basically your cumulative experience that will, will make your character better and i enjoy also gaming aspects like building your character but i also really dislike the idea of classes and levels what i ended up with was basically taking inspiration from many japanese ttrpgs like Raku, tama and sword world and combining aspects from Fabula Ultima, which is like JR, this TT JRPG, and combining those aspects with games like Fate and Dungeon World, even. So, yeah, that's basically the game. And it only uses 2D6, so very simple system. But let's not dive too deep into that yet, because we are gonna play a whole adventure together. So, I think you will get the gist of how everything works while we play, so I don't have to blabber everything right now. But the whole idea of this series is basically, this is going to be our session zero, where we will create everything from, like, I, I have nothing right now. So what we will create, we will create actually the first region that we are going to be in. We are going to create our starting city. We are going to create our first quest that we are going to go in. And of course, we are going to create our solo character as well. Really exciting to see how you can get going from basically zero while using this system. There are many oracles and tables that you could use with Heroes of the White Tower. Just for the sake of me wanting to just push my system to the limit, let's only use stuff from my book for now. The setting of the Tolvarian is very open-ended. I wanted to just give you guys uh, like a beginning premise of a world and I just wanted to spark some imagination on what kind of perils and possibilities you could find in this world. World of Tolvarian is high fantasy mythical land that is surrounded by the ideas of six elements. And these six elements are light, darkness, fire, earth, air and water. And basically the whole world contains these six pillars, these six spires that were built in order for the world to like live in harmony 
and all the elements just to find a balance within the world. But then the element of darkness became jealous of all these different elements coming into existence while the darkness was the original because first there was nothingness. This darkness started to corrupt all the other spires and pillars. And out of this corruption, the false light, which became this champion of darkness, false light wanted to take over the whole Tolovarian and corrupt all these other elemental spires to engulf the world in darkness, basically. This became known as the Great War, and the final battles of the Great War happened within the White Tower, which was the Tower of Light. The second element of all was the final last stand of the other elemental powers against the darkness. And the False Light's power wasn't enough to beat all the other elements, and so the war ended. But it left whole Tolovarian like scarred and full of this darkness corruption that still surrounded some of the other p elemental pillars. And that is basically the start of where basically the game suggests that you will start. So it is the age of heroes when people have lived in peace a fair amount of time and now heroes will set forward out of the White Tower region, from the region of light into these other regions and hopefully release the other spires, the elemental spires, from the corruption and explore all these areas that have been left into the darkness for so long. But yeah, that's basically it. You can have many different kinds of adventures within the world of Tolvarian. Let's start just by creating a region where we start from, just to know the surrounding area. So, click that like, subscribe, please. I'm desperate. So here I have all the tables from my book. Let's start by just creating a region, so we have at least something that we can work with. We roll d6. We only use 2d6 in this whole game. And of course I wanted to create tables that will also work with 2d6, so you don't have to like mess around with a bunch of different dice. I might suggest that you have few additional d6s, because the system uses boons and banes, which is basically when you have a boon you get additional d6 and then you roll 3d6 and you pick the two biggest and you know. And when you have banes you take extra die and take the lower results. So yeah, few extra d6s might not hurt you, but basically you can work with only two as well. I wanted to make the system also as light as possible, in a sense that you could only basically like print out a booklet of the game and then have like 2d6 with you, that it's like really easy and really portable that you can even play when you don't have that much space. Let's start with the region. What is the ge geography of the region? Two, it's a coast. Yes, I love coastal starts. It's so much potential. I actually took this nice looking X map from online. I will definitely leave a link to this nice, free, good looking X map. So let's start with the location. Because we are, because we got coast, so we can just Add some coastlines here, for starters. Coastal line here, like that. Be amazed of my amazing drawing skills. It's breathtaking. So we at least have a starting hex. Let's see the scale of the region. So if it's small, we can ma maybe make it like one hex. Uh, if it's medium, we can make the coastal line like maybe nine hexes. If it's big, we will make it bigger and so forth. So let's see how big this location is. Five. Two regions combined. Interesting. Okay, we now know it's going to be two like regions combined. So let's let's roll the first region to end and then we can come back to this one. Civilization? Is there any buildings? None. Okay. But I will only say that there is only one small town. The location that we are gonna start from. And that's like this kind of basically encampment. So we can put it here. Within the coast at least, there are no other cities right now. That is very interesting. So wilderness adventure, ancient civilization adventure, peril. So let's see how dangerous this place is. Six. Dreadful. Where are we? 
I'm in danger. Oh my god. So it is a dreadful location. I will just add it here for now. Dreadful. Oh boy. Is it where in the world? Two. It's in the south. Oh, cool. So that can reflect the name. The southern something. Let's see what it's, what it's gonna be. Finally, we will roll the biome. What kind of weather and vegetation we can expect in. Five. Light forest. So it is a dreadful southern forest. Cool, cool, cool. I guess I will just make some trees in as well. I know these look amazing. They can actually continue the other hexes as well. Let's add some green so we actually know that these are trees because you wouldn't they could be like turds or something. Oh. Subscribe for more map making tips you guys. Only your imagination is the limit. But we have a dreadful light forest. That that is really cool. I like the idea. It can also reflect the name of the place. And now finally, the scale was that this is two regions combined. So let's now roll the other geography. We don't have to roll the scale for this region because we know that it is the combined of two regions. Or do I want to be even fancy and just decide what the other geographical location is? You know what? Let the dice decide. Three. Valley. There is also a valley in this area. So the coastline would go over somewhere here even. And then we also know that there are mountains in here. This is basically like a start of a valley. Bigger mountain over here. Actually now when I think about it, it was going to be a big region. So let's just like, let's just open up these mountains like over here as well. Like so. So it's basically, it's opening up into this big, big valley, because the whole idea is, was that it was two different regions. So yeah, this is everything we know right now. We have an encampment here in the south. We know that this region does not have any known civilizations right now. It's this dreadful, wild, coastal area, which basically opens as a mountainside first and behind the mountains opens up this valley of light forest, which is known to be a dreadful place. Why, why it is a dreadful? I think that might be something that we discover later. So now we only need a name for this region, or this valley, and or the encampment. The en encampment can be adventurer's rest, because that's basically what it is. The place where the adventurers that will go further into the valley, which is stranger's place. They can come here, resupply. Probably the settlement has some supply lines into other parts of the world that will provide this location the possibility for adventurers to go even deeper. And hopefully they map out and discover new or lost things within the region. I think the name of the forest could be Sorrowful Forest. Or just the sorrow forest because it has caused so much sorrow for all the adventures and other people and the name of the location can just be this southern frontier because it is a location that we don't know much about but that's cool that's really nice that already gives us a quite big of an idea of what kind of adventure we are going for in here we are definitely going to have some kind of exploration and basically this kind of being the pathfinder for the new settlers that are coming into this wild, untamed region of the world. So that already gives us quite a lot. But I still want to know a little bit more about Adventurer's Rest. I have here Civilized Location Creation Steps. So this will provide us some ideas of what kind of settlement it is. First question is, how big is it? Choose and roll for scale. I think scale was on the first page, right? Scope and scale, yes. So I would say I'm expecting a lot just because it is the only known civilized area as we speak in this region. So I would expect that there is some uh, quite a lot of people living in this settlement. Six. 
a lot. Yeah. Answer is a lot. So let's say that there are for settlement size, let's say there is 30,000 people living. And that for settlement, that is quite a lot. And that is also an inter interesting question. Why there is a need to be so many people living in this settlement? Why so many people have left a one place at the same time? Because the settlement idea is that but there is not like there's still not like very fixed buildings or architecture or a certain type of administration rooted into that society. So it means it's like fair, fairly new, fresh location that people have started to settle in. So yeah, and it's it's already huge. So that means a big change has happened somewhere else. Definitely interesting. Okay. Next. Who rules here? Choose or roll a faction? That is interesting indeed. Let's do that. Random faction generator. Here we go. Formed. Two. Guild. Perfect. Works. Perfect. Two. Four. Obtain. Okay. Guild wants to obtain one. Power. And, and I won't roll for scale because we know that the settlement is huge. So it has to be a big guild. And opposed by six, eternal. Okay, so there is some kind of guild, huge guild, that was opposed by internal conflict. Is that why they have escaped into this location? Yeah, let's say this adventurer's rest is basically ruled by an ancient guild or adventurers which became too big to sustain itself in the mainland and that's why and that's why all these guild members are here right now so they basically had to remove themselves from this ancient adventuring guilds that has been there for always and They've just accepted new adventurers into their guild, but because of the land that they were living in was started to be a little bit too peaceful. There wasn't a lot of work for adventurers anymore. That's why some of them decided to have this chance and they packed up like this fleet of ships and just sailed to the south, never to be seen again in their end. So it might be that we don't have any support from anywhere else. This is all that we have right now. And our only option is to settle here and find resources here. It's basically this kind of do or die situation. Really cool. Okay, is there more? It's main focus, we don't need that right now. Remember, if you, whenever you have tables and you got some you got an idea and something is established, just skip that part because you don't need it. Like when you start to have enough things, you can put the pieces together. If there are some pieces missing, then you can roll for it if you want. So our main focus is very clear for right now. We don't need to roll that. The problem it has solved. So something that they already have established within the community. That might be interesting. Let's do that. Here we have object and descriptor, 2d6. Object, 2 and 1. 2 and 1. Protect, okay. And object, 5-5. Five, five. Protect power. Okay, so I would just say that they have established a safe zone around the city and they have also found some kind of coal mine near here. So they have found a coal mine somewhere here. So they also have secured resources to, to survive day-to-day -day life. Securing power also means that the guild has also secured the leadership of, of the whole settlement. So we, we are not starting from scratch. The, basically, the guild has already rooted itself in here, so we have probably been here for a while. The problem it is facing now. I think this is the quest that we are gonna go in, because we will roll a quest. So let's do this last. It's known for something interesting that the settlement found when they arrived here. Let's do that as well. Choose and roll adventure location theme. 
Here we go, adventure location theme, 2d6. Bada bim bada boom. 4, 3. 4, 3. A living castle! Have they... They have found power already. Did they find the... Are they living in a living castle right now? Do they have a moving castle? Oracle. Are they living in this interesting location? Even. Are they living in that location right now? Three. Yes, but. The but... I would say the but is the quest. So the quest has something to do with the living castle. So they basically arrived into the so southern frontier. They found within the southern banks, they found this ancient tower and temple that had been dormant for centuries. And they basically started to build their whole life within the castle. And they secured and they protected the power for themselves. They found the source how to move the castle, but they didn't realize how it would be, what would happen when it was activated. And it probably was activated by an accident. So now the castle is actually moving. The Adventurer's Rest is actually now a moving castle. And our mission is basically to find a way how to control it. Or something, it might be that we need to find a way how to control it. There might be some kind of key object or aspect that we have to find in order for us to actually like know how to seize control of the castle moving because now let's just say that it's basically like making this kind of dormant movement that cannot be controlled so they have found a way to to mount and dismount the, the castle but they don't still know how to control it and that is the main focus of our adventure okay now we have to roll a quest we basically know the reason of the quest. So who is the faction itself? Two. What we have to do in order to seize the control of the moving castle. E6. One. Protect. Okay. What? Six. Protect faction. Why? Three. Curiosity. Okay. So. It means that our character has been hired to protect this kind of research team who is going to find the way how to control the castle. Where? Is this information within the castle or somewhere far? Do we have to travel somewhere? Two. Near. So it's not within the castle itself, but it's somewhere in the near region. And we are opposed by... Five. A monster. So they have probably found the location of this, basically this kind of old ruin, some kind of connection point of the castle and some of the locations here nearby, maybe somewhere within the near mountains, that clearly had a connection with the moving castle. And they believe that within this old ruin there lies the knowledge of how to actually take seize control of the castle but they already sent one scouting party there ahead and they never came back and there was there were reports of some kind of monster lurking within that scouting location so now they will send another party with the researchers and we are going to be the adventurer who has been hired to protect to protect these researchers from that monster and that is who is our character is going to be. Cool. Cool. I like it. I love it. This is perfect. And that will be our quest when we, in the next part, we will start our adventure. But now, finally, we also need to create a character, right? We need to create an adventurer who will take up on this quest. I don't want to roll everything randomly because I want to create a character that is good at fighting but also good at spell casting because that is also a thing that I want to experience myself and I want to demonstrate you as well so those are my only two those are my only two things that I want the character to have but we can roll the kin of our character because that doesn't that doesn't determine if we can cast spells or not and I created six original kin just to reflect on the world building that I had done and just to give you 
an inspiration on different possibilities and, and just to give you a little bit more options to not always have humans, elves, dwarves in your fantasy setting, but basically they are basically just like classic, classic fantasy kin, but I just added some elements into these into this skin, so they are basically like fantasy counterparts, but just with elemental flavor. But at some point I'm also planning to do a classic conversion guide for this game that you can basically like use classical, classical kin if you want. So we have Luminari, which are basically humans of light. We have Eldwen, which are basically elves of darkness. We have Silvaran, which are basically your, your halflings of Earth, but they are a little bit more fluffier in my world. We have Burogar, which are basically your fire orcs. We have Aguantian, which are your fish people, may <laughs> water fish people. And then we have Sephirian, which are your well pixies, if you may, but they are air elemental pixies. So we have six different kin and we can just basically randomly pick one because that doesn't determine if we can use any spells or not so let's just do it let's just roll a d6 and see what what kin are we three silvaran perfect i love it in the vibrant tapestry of Telvarian, the silvaran emerge as the smallest kin jovial stewards of nature and merriment with an infectious energy that brings joy to those around them. Silveron possess a natural talent for making friends. Their charismatic and brave nature often leads them to take up on roles as leaders and envoys. Despite their jovial demeanor, Silveron tend to keep to themselves, finding solace in the face of nature. So yeah, let's create a Silveron and our starting Perk as a Silveron is the Silveron. Silverons are great at making new friends. They get a boon on everything relating in making a great first impression. Nice. And that is something we get just by being um, Silveron. So there are basically three ways you can create a hero in Heroes of the White Tower. Uh, there is the basic method with A and B character or with the detailed method. I usually tend to go with the versatile hero because it's still quite easy to do, but it still gives you a little bit more options. So we choose a kin that we did, we gain the kin perk, then we choose two rolls, and we get the, those two roll perks from them as well. And then we can either choose one advancement from our rolls or from a general perk. And what does this mean? Basically, in my game, it's more like profession-based, which is almost like a classless system. The only thing you are required to do is basically when you want to take a certain role's perks, you only need to basically take the first starting perk from that role and after that you can take the, any advancements that you want. You only just need to do the first investment to open up like the base perk of the, of the role and after that you can basically pick anything you want. So I think we will go with Magi and Warrior. Just having this good old classical mage warrior combination to begin with. We might take some additional roles along the way, but let's start with these two. Very basic. It's it's nice to start with the basics when learning a new system, am I right? But as a mana bound, we have to do one more important choice. And when you are a spellcaster or mana bound in Heroes of the White Tower, you have to decide what is your main elemental aptitude. Because basically there are two domains of magic. There, are, there is the Elenion magic, which is the first magic. This contains the magics of light and darkness. And then there is Esetuaren magic, which is the elemental magic that contains the four other elements of fire, water, earth and air. And the difference is that if you decide to go with Elenion magic, you have to decide between the domains of light and darkness. And if you decide to take light, you can't cast any darkness spells. And if you go with the darkness, you can't cast any light spells. And those are, and that will be your only domain that you can cast 
but usually the powers of light are so powerful and over encompassing so that's why you only can use the power of light if you decide to go with esoterian magic the elemental magic you are a little bit more flexible with your choices you will also decide your main domain of magic that being either fire water earth or air if you decide to go with fire you can't cast any water spells but you can cast earth and air air spells and if you and if you decide to take water you can't cast any fire spells but can earth and air if you take earth you cannot cast any air spells but you can cast water and fire and if you take air domain to yourself then you can't cast any earth spells but you can cast water and fire again and just because we are silver and i think we will go with earth magic as our main just because we just want to play into that specific earthen dweller fantasy and yeah it just makes sense and of course when we take the other role of the warrior we will also gain the warrior perk which is after action roll using melee discipline is being solved instead of re-rolling warrior may use one stamina to turn one of the action dice as six which is the best possible result from the other die and now we have one more advancement that we can take with advancement we can now either take maybe one perk from the magi roll three we could take one perk from the warrior tree or we could take a general perk that are in the end of the rolls that are more like general adventuring related perks but what i decided to do is that we will take another mana bound perk level mana bound is one of the rare perks that you can take multiple levels in and more stronger we are with the mana bound perk the stronger spells we cast so that's why i will put earth and two so i will use one advancements to bump up our earth magic even higher and now we only need to raise two of our disciplines into level three and three of the disciplines to level two and rest of them will start from level one and our health and stamina starts from three so in Horse of white tower we don't have any attributes or skills per se but we have disciplines disciplines are basically everything that encompasses your attributes and your skills so every so every time you do an actual action roll it is most of the time compared to one of the disciplines i have here so we can raise two of them to level three three of them to level two and rest of them will be one so what will be the biggest ones probably knowledge will be quite big for us we are also a warrior i would say melee will be three as well two craft craft is basically like all your professional work and everything in that kind of sense so that is definitely two i would say our willpower is two as well let's put it on might that would make sense as a warrior that we also have might so agility is only one range is only one duplicate is only one there we go and like i said our health and stamina both start from three health is probably quite self ex explanatory it is how many how much harm we can endure until we pass out stamina is basically like your ability to use different actions to really like push you to the limit so mechanical wise that means you can re-roll some action rolls it also helps you to stabilize spell casting it also fuels some of the heroic perks that you can use as well so everything that will strain you mentally and physically will be taken out from stamina and finally pick a weapon of your choice a pocketable amount of wealth full rations and three items or pieces of equipment fitting for your character and i think our weapon of choice will be just a sword let's just add money pouch here in heroes of the white tower all of the amounts of different things are counted as different sizes so a pocketable amount of wealth is amount of like one bag of gold for example there are only three categories of melee weapons which are basically light medium and heavy weapons so just by typing in sword i know it's a medium weapon 
I don't have any specific weapons that do specific things, unless it's in like a special weapon that has some kind of magical ability, or it's just like a very fine crafted weapon that has some kind of special function. Like regular weapons are just divided into three categories. We will also have rations. All characters have basically 10 item slots and these are further divided into 5 and 5. 5 items are, as you may say, at hand. These are something that the hero can produce with ease. Like this is how when you have sheeted your sword, this is when you have like a small pack ready that you can just pick out an item and use it. And the rest, the other five items are basically packed, which means that it will take more time for you to like take the items out of the bag, for example. And if you have situations in adventures where you might lose your pack pack, for example, it's really easy to just say that you will lose this side of things. You will lose the things that are at your, your pack at the moment. And then you also have pockets that can contain a pocketable amount of things and you can have 10 pocketable items at any time. So we have rations, we might have rope, that would make, that would make sense. We then have two more items that would fit our character. I think, I think a journal would make sense to our character to have. And what else? A bedroll. I think a journal is something that our character will definitely keep to themselves, like at hand. And that's it. That is the character creation. Now we have created a whole region. We know where we start from, our adventures rest. We know our quest, we know our character, and we will definitely go into a lone wolf adventure at the first time. Or of course we have our expedition with us the other researchers and we will see if there are any other guards with us as well. But yeah, I'm I'm really excited about this and it was great exercise for me to see what things are working within the book right now and what are not. Like this is this is why it's important to play your own games time to time. So that's why I'm so glad that we can do this. You kind of start to forget that what things are in your brain and what things are in, in the paper, you know? And that's why I also try to sometimes some, so take some breaks as well and not to like focus on this at all. So I have some time to forget some of the things, how you can play it. So I can like le relearn the things and see it from fresher perspective and see like, okay, this doesn't work at all. And, and oh, this was so nice and this works really well. I'm really excited about the future. I'm really excited about what kind of adventures our character is gonna go into. I will decide a name for our character and I will also find a fitting portrait for our character as well. The next time we will start our adventure and hopefully we can find the way how to take control, seize control of this moving fortress that is that is right now the settlement for Adventurer's Rest. So hopefully this escort mission will go great and we will seize the power to control the fortress. That's all for me for now. If you have any questions about the system, definitely links down below if you want to check out this system. But for now it's Moromoro.